do you run a half cab top or do you have one of the tonneau covers? Got that nice flat surface back here, aerodynamics, it looks cool. But what's the one major drawback? Every time it rains, you got a pond in the middle of your tonneau. So I'm gonna show you how to fix that today. Let's roll. Now you can see a dust puddle up on the back right here. So probably what I have to do is make a bow to go back here to pick up the center of that so the water runs off. Like I've got here, make one of them to go back there, prevent that from puddling up. Now as you can see from the last shot, we had a big old pool of water going on in the middle of this. And what ends up happening, if there's enough water, it pulls that snap loose right there from right there. And does it flood the interior? No, it still doesn't. Because you get the water weight right here, it pushes down, it pulls right here. But that way this right here is made, it snaps up on this right here, which makes this lip roll up like this. So when it rolls up, the water, you really got to back up really hard to get to slosh up inside there and fall down inside, these, um, inside your compartment down there. So why don't you back up, you take off, most of it runs off the back or off the sides. And once you're probably, you know, 50 yards down the road, you've got very little water left. But what we're going to do today, we're going to make us a bow to go across this like that to help cut back on the whole issue to begin with. So basically what we're gonna be doing is just what we've got going on right here with the top here. This simply locks into the roll bar, it snaps in and out. You can take and just, you can take either bow this up a little bit more or you can take and roll it down, rotate this down because they're not glued in right here. It'll rotate down before you can take it off when you take the top down and such. So you can see the top edge of it right there where it just snaps into the roll bar. But I've got a video showing how I made this and I'll link it up for you. Underneath this tonneau cover right here is the factory rail. So what we got to do is just pull my Velcro. I'm actually working on a uh, review install video for this particular top. It's a Rampage cab top. So after we get that laid back, here's what we're after. Because you got this channel going on right here. That's where we're going to cut, modify these right here. To fit inside that groove, then we got to establish the length of our arc for our bow to come across to hold the tonneau cover up. And modifying our T-fitting here, what you want to look at is, you got basically two ways of doing this. You can cut the notch the bottom where it fit. The bottom side of this right here will fit down side of this groove right here, and they'll stick up above this rail right here. That's actually a bad thing. Why? Because if you've got that extra rise coming up out of here, what you're going to get is this, an impression on the edge of material right here, and eventually it's just going to wear the material out a little faster. So you want to preserve the life of your tiny cover for as long as possible. They're tough, very good material, but no need in creating undue stress if it's not if it's not needed, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at modifying this about probably cutting right along there because that's gonna make me set me up where I can fit my groove. This through here, cut here to about right there. That's gonna allow the bottom of it to fit down inside this bottom groove. Then as the pipe rises up for that arc. You gotta catch the arc right along in here somewhere, touching the top or probably right along in here. Then you're not gonna create a whole bunch of stress on the edges of the material where it's gonna be stretched the hardest right here, okay? So I'm gonna get these right here cut and then you'll be able to see about where I decided to cut them from to make the proper fits. Now as you can see here, this is what I'm going for. You see, where I cut this right here, I took my little Dremel tool, sliced that right there, and it fits right down inside that groove right there and I can, I can aim the PCV pipe straight over that way and loop over to the other one. So I'm going to mark that I can put this on top of this. I'm going to take put this on top of this, line up my half inch outputs. Then I can take my sharpie marker. Stay, stay. And mark right there. And I moved it right there. Now this ain't exactly rocket science. As long as you're within the ballpark, it'll work. So don't stress over trying to be crazy accurate with it. There's what I'm using to cut it with. Now I've got an also an old school regular style Dremel tool. I like it. It's served me well for years. But having a flex shaft, and you can't beat them. They're awesome. Variable speed, rechargeable, awesome. Now once you get all this right here trimmed up, you can take that out 
and all your little frayed ends right here where it melts the plastic, you just hit the do like that right there, and they pop right off there. So simple. See? Perfect. Now we got them both notched. I just got that. Now they're just sitting in there. They're not going to be shooting upward that hard because that would create one heck of a high bow. We don't want that. But just for video purposes, you got that one there. And you got that one there. So now what we need to do is get our PVC pipe determine the length we need and chop that off. Now take your PVC pipe and stick it up in there and bomb it all the way out because we got to establish accurately our length. And as you can see here is what I'm using. It's half inch PVC. Just regular old plain water pipe you use in your house. Okay? Nothing special. Alright. Get my marker. Come on over here. And drop my marker. Oh, yep. Get hit with the door. Well, I'm going to roll stay okay so we got this in here bottomed out and if you project up right there if you was to keep it straight that's about where it would hit at okay but it's not what we want because it's going to arc upward a little bit we need a longer length to create the bow to support the top so this is one of those cases to where cut it too long and trim it down to size so if this were to project straight over and you're bobbing out about right along in here, which would hit right there, I'm going to add probably, it's going to be too long. I'm going to add about two inches from this mark here, which will put me on a silver, probably on the other, right on the silver line right along in here. So I'm going to cut it right there, pop it in place, and see how much rise I get. At that point, what I can do is keep trimming it off till I get the proper amount of arc I want to establish our length. So I intentionally cut it too long. You know, I told you it's gonna take it all the way out to that uh, where's the silver line. But I just wanted to cut it too long to show you how exaggerated the bow will be if you go too long for it. See how long it is? Your this would never work with a tiny cover at all. That's why I say you cut long and keep cutting short, take the length out of it until you get down to where you need it. So we're gonna take a bunch more out of it and see where we're at. And I'm just using a plain old old school wood saw to cut that PVC. Yes, you can buy the little cutters, you squeeze and cut them off, but I don't have any, so that's what I'm going to do. Now, there comes a time as you're trimming off the ends of this to adjust your bow that you may have to take these part. Because I was just putting them right here, which wasn't fully engaging the whole width of this. And it was allowing it to rotate, and this would pop down under, and the bow would drop instead of being up, up top like this. So I had to get inside here so it wouldn't rotate and trip us down. And so I got it locked in over here, and I've got, I'm almost where I wanted, but I still got to put my foam insulation right here. You want to run the foam insulation because it helps keep down the wear of your tiny cover or if you're doing it for your top, whichever the case may be. So I'm going to put the uh, foam on it real quick, tuck it up there where it goes, give it a test fit. I finally conquered this beast because well, I was having issues making this work out like I wanted it to so I kind of put the camera down figured things out and now I'm going to show you what I did now the issues I was having is I was just making one bow just right next to the back window this is a large area so when you got your soft tops like here like what you got going on here one bow is just fine because it's such a smaller area right here okay and oftentimes if you've got the full top going all the way back your roll bar stuff like that or even your uh, like on a best top super top you've got a bar frame your frame bar whatever you want to call it going across right there which creates another point then you put this in there it helps it all stay flat doesn't pull up okay but this being such a wide air longer area right here and no support anywhere through here i put it up through here thinking oh yeah that's gonna be great and this kind of not gonna pull up and stuff no, it wasn't going to happen that way. Because it's still going to pull up right along in here. I mean, if you look at my... This thing ain't about a month old. It's already got that water stain. So I need to clean that. I'll tell you what, down in the description down below, give me some good ideas what it takes to clean it right there. So, I had to come up with something a little bit different. So, I created another bow right here. You see it. And which again was going to work out fine except then you still had this dip in the middle so chop that one half chop that one half put a t fitting right here run another bar across here now i got this nice little 
roof pitch kind of thing going on here on both sides. Water runs off just perfectly now. So I'm going to pull this tonneau cover back a little bit. I'm going to show you guys what it did. And there you go. This is all, see all my piping here is half inch PVC. You got half inch, half inch here, half inch here, half inch here, slip fitting tees. And you see right there is another half inch slip fit tee. Now, whenever I started doing this earlier in the video, I thought I was going to get away with that one bow. And well, I was proven wrong. So these are one inch here half inch here t fittings okay slip fit because they just slip in you got two sides two styles you got slip and screw screw has the thread inside of it slip the pipe just slips inside of it okay i did not glue the piping into this right here they just simply pushed on and let it ride but i found that i found that i like these three quarter fittings better which is three quarter inch here three quarter inch here half inch here and again they're slip fittings not screw style I found I like these a lot better because when you come under the lip here, you cut just a big enough gap for it to lock in here inside this rail. And the lower side fits down here and helps it stay put, you know, from twisting. Because one of the things I was having with this rear side, the rear piece right here, is that under pressure with the tonneau cover sitting on top of it, it wanted to roll forward and, and the bow would drop down. So that's where the t fittings come into play. Well, actually, the T fittings were uh, two purposes. One, down the middle right here, which gave the tiny cover a crown to allow the water to roll off this way, but it also allowed a support to the front bow here that you see right there. Came back, teed into this, which gave each one of them support to prevent this right here from rolling and popping, snapping in, in the uh, arch, would be downward instead of upward. And also, I get a little bit better shot here. Like I mentioned over there, you can see how much better the fit is by cutting that groove each side of the fitting that goes inside this channel here of the factory soft top channel. And plus it catches down here at the bottom. So again, this is a three quarter, three quarter, half inch slip T. And this is all half inch uh, PVC pipe right here. One thing I want to tell you is to get plenty of PCV pipe because I actually had to, luckily I had a whole bunch of it back here in my shop because I was doing some plumbing work. I miscut one of them, so therefore it made too little of an arc and it couldn't support the weight of the tiny. No matter what I did with it, there was too little arc and it kept wanting to snap downward. So yeah, I ended up having to cut another piece. No big deal, this stuff's cheap. Not expensive at all. Ah, it's a dead murder hornet. I'm no, just joking. So I told you guys earlier in the video that I would measure that pipe to tell you how long it is, because that's a common question everyone asks. So tape measure, pull the ends off. Like I said, I don't have these glued on. Pull these ends off from here to here, 53 and a half inches. Now, let me make a little disclaimer about that. How you cut these right here can have altered the length on that just a little bit, because if you cut these deeper in or the shallower in, it's gonna move that pipe back and forth. So you can kind of see how I've got these cut. They're not exactly in center, but a little bit off center a little bit. So what I suggest you do, you know, cut that 53 and a half inches or so. Instead of using the 53 and a half cut, cut it like 54 inches, okay? Then have you some kind of a um, tool that cuts a little bit off the end, just a little bit at a time and bring it back to custom fit to your Jeep. Because, like I said, if you alter these cut off a little bit, it can affect how well it engages. So, I ended up with the 53 and a half inches completed length. And now, remember, for plumbing people who know, this is cut, this is a piece here, this is a piece, so on, so on, and it's glued together right here. So, after the tees, end to end was 53 and a half inches. But I do suggest you making it just a little bit longer and keep trimming little by little by little until it fits like you want to. Now, don't glue it together until you've got everything functioning like you want. Because once you glue this together, it ain't coming apart. Now to help protect your top, get you some pipe insulation. Wherever you got your PVC pipe at your Lowe's or Home Depot or wherever it is you got it, this is gonna be somewhere close. This is three quarter inch. Yes, I said this is half inch pipe here, but you want the three quarter inch insulation. And notice right here, it's got that slight little split. And what that's for, 
you can stick your finger in and just come right up through there and split this piping on open and just slide over top of this right here. Don't do that. Leave it enclosed. If you're doing plumbing underneath your house or if you get everything all plumbed up, then insulate your pipes. Yes, that's when you split it. But take this and if I can do this with one hand and hold the camera both. Okay, I'm going to do some camera trickery here. Slide it on the end. And slide it down. See, I've got a little bit hanging out right here. And this left a little bit hanging out here. Why? Because this T-fitting is going on right there. So what you want to do is, I need to find one more piece. I think i got another piece floating around here somewhere. I'm going to put on this right here. Of course, the ones up front. And that will complete the fabrication of your bow to allow a runoff. So apparently, I don't have any more of that. So I need to make a run to Lowe's and pick up some more. So, put your ends on. And what you're going to do is you're going to take and bend this like that. Now, I mentioned earlier in the video about not making sure your fittings are below this rail. And look here why. Imagine your fabric coming up right here and stretching over across the top of that. These two sides right here is going to stress the fabric. Eventually, it's going to wear through the fabric. So don't do that. So you get a little bit more bend. And it tucks right inside the rail like that right there. And pull these back there. You should pull this back a little bit. Pull this back here. And what I also probably would recommend, if you got you some Velcro straps, go around your bar. Now this is a family style roll bar. If you've got a um, sport bar, probably what I would do with a sport bar, this would go behind the sport bar with the leg. Sport bars, the bar comes down at 45 degrees or so here, and then lands right here. So this would put a sport bar, this would be on the back side of the sport, take your velcro wrap around that that'll keep this right here stationary keep from rotating anything this is also part of that keep from this rotating and collapsing down but if you was to have something here to hold it in place it would help that much more so got those in place i need to get one more one more length of this i'll put one here and two up there so i didn't get to work here in a few minutes so let me get this thing stretched back on and we'll show you what it looks like and there you go, all stretched back on. And you can see right here, this is the side that's got the foam. This side doesn't because it's picking it up off of it a little bit. And it actually smooths this radius out quite a bit by putting that foam roll up there. But what the foam roll is going to do is just help protect the top because foam obviously being much more forgiving than the edges of those teeth right there. It's just going to help protect the fabric of the top and make your top last longer. Sweet. All right. I have a power ice crew. I've seen several times in the Facebook groups and I've seen in the forums that people don't like to run tiny covers because of all the water that pulls up in the middle of them. Now you've got a solution. So if you learned a little something from this video, hit me with a thumbs up, subscribe if you have it, and leave me some cool comments down below. And if someone's going to ask, am I going to do a review on this top? Yes, I am. Actually, it's in the works. I've got a few scenes shot, but i got to finish up a few things. But hopefully not this weekend, but next weekend, I'll release a video on how to install this top. It's really cool. Probably my favorite top I've had so far. All right. So everyone, if you enjoyed this video, thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't. Leave some cool comments down below. And I really appreciate you hanging out with me. Peace out. Later, y'all.